everyone, Jerry Bellini here. Welcome to the tiny house. Today's video, I'm rather excited about it, is a, another dot project, a Japanese rice bag. Yes. So I had mentioned in my idea, uh, my dot idea video last week, that I was going to make a bag. And a couple people said, oh, you know, I'd love to see the bag, you know, after you make it. And I started to make it and thought, you know, I think I should video this um, because because of the nature of the dots, the way I do them, and I know a lot of you are doing them your own way and that's awesome, but because of the fold over edge, um, putting things together is a little different than when you have a raw edge and you just, you know, stitch the seam allowance. So I thought, ah, let me turn the camera on. And honestly, um, first I wanna tell you, I was inspired by uh, K3N's rice bag video. She did it about six months ago. And ever since I saw it, I thought I wanna make one of those, but I just haven't had <laughs> the chance to do it. And I said, I'm going to do this. So um, here it is. Anyway, um, it's done a little, um, you know, out of the norm because like I said, of the fact that it's got the fold over edges I felt it was super easy to make, very easy because everything was already stitched down. Um, there is a lining and a pocket, but I did not quilt mine. I just left it. Now I thought about uh, putting some quilting stitches in it when I had, you know, the panels made. So I made the, the uh, front panels. I made four panels, you know, for the four sides. And I thought about doing some stitching in it, but I didn't. And I don't remember if I explained why in the video, but I constructed my bag very differently than K3N constructed hers because I didn't have seams to deal with. And so I just wasn't sure at what point to do what so i kind of winged it and i took you along for the ride so i hope you enjoy the ride and i am not going to i don't know it's always something here um the noise i am not going to put quilting in it i feel like it is lovely just as it is it feels really good i am going to make another one maybe i'll put quilting in that one but i would have to construct it a little differently and you'll see what I'm talking about when you watch the video and hopefully you will watch. I just love it. Yeah. So let's move on to the video and uh, please let me know what you think about the technique. And I also wanted to add if you have any other dot projects you would like to see me uh, create, please let me know uh, down in the comments. And if you're on the Facebook group, please let me know in there because of the fact that they do have the fold over edge, things are constructed differently. And I'd be happy uh, if you challenge me to make something else. I had, originally I had like 300 squares, so I still have quite a few left. All right, let's get started. So I started my bag last night and I thought, you know, I think this would be good for people to see how I'm going to put this together. So here I am, turn the camera on and I'm going to show you how to create this bag. I am going to make a rice bag. I've been wanting to make one for a long time. And uh, ever since I saw K3N's rice bag video and that was probably six months ago. So this bag is inspired by her but it is not done the way she did hers. So if you wanna do a traditional rice bag, then go watch her video. If you wanna do one with your dots, with the finished edges, then continue watching this. Or you can continue watching this anyway to see how I did it. So let's go over the supplies. You need 16 squares. So mine are three inches and you need 16 of them and they if you're gonna follow my directions, you're going to need the finished edge, the folded over edge. So I've got, I sewed mine together already. Okay, so there's four in each panel. 
Let me show you what they look like, which ones I chose. It was hard to decide. So these are the four sides of the bag. Now I need a bottom, but I don't want to use the dots for my bottom. So I cut out a piece of my eco cloth. Now I can't just use this, it's just a piece of cloth. I have to make it resemble this, meaning I need fold over. So I cut a piece of cardboard and this is a six inch piece of cardboard and I'm going to create one large square with this by folding this over and doing the same technique I did with the little squares and basting it. I'm going to do the invisible baste on this, this one. So then I will have my bottom and put that to the side. Now you need, and I want you to pay attention. Okay, if you're stitching, I want you to stop and listen. So now you're going to need a lining. And I already started this bag last night, so it's not gonna all, they're not gonna all look exactly the same when I show them to you. But you're going to need five pieces for the lining four sides and a bottom. So we've got five pieces. Now, what you need to do with these five pieces, pay attention, are you paying attention? So these two, I haven't done anything with, I'm just gonna set them over to the side for a moment and these three I already finished. So now I'm going to flip it over and you're going to see there's lining in here. I'm using a flannel. I have a thick flannel that I like. Now, I think Catherine used some kind of um, a batting and I think they call it wadding over there in England. But I'm going to use a nice thick flannel. So. And, and this is the part I really need you to pay attention. What I decided to do was lay my batting inside the seams. So here is, this is what I did. Here's the plain piece of lining. And I took my batting, laid it down and very carefully, because I'm not using the cardboard now, obviously, very carefully folded it over and pinned it. And then I invisible basted all around it. So now my lining is, my yeah, my lining is, I'm sorry, I'm not using the right word. My batting is inside my lining piece. So when I put my linings together, and you'll understand this as we go along, it will all make sense. But I needed something that resembled my dots with the finished edge, right? So you see that's finished edge. So when I go to sew all this together, it, it's gonna make a lot more sense. So now, are you paying attention? Because now you really have to pay attention. <laughs> In order to make this piece fit as a lining on the inside of this bag, you must cut your batting an eighth of an inch smaller than the six inch square. So my lining pieces are a very healthy six and a half inches. They're a little bit bigger than six and a half inches because I always cut them a little bigger to allow for the fold over. So this piece of flannel, the batting, is one eighth inch smaller. So I took an eighth of an inch off there and an eighth of an inch off here. And I didn't do that when I was messing with this last night. I left it at six inches and it didn't work. When I laid, so this is all stitched, 
when I laid my my finished dots on top of it, it was sticking out quite a bit. I assumed it had something to do with, everything to do with the fold over factor. And like I said, I can't explain it to you. But if you cut off an eighth of an inch, so cut an eighth of an, this is an eighth of an inch smaller than six inches. Cut it off, do your fold over, it will fit perfectly, as you can see. So, now I'm going to do that. Okay, now you can get back to your stitching and just listen. So here's my lining piece. You might want to watch this though. And here's my um, my batting. Let's just call it batting. And you see I have a generous seam allowance. So what I did, and I'm very I very carefully folded this over and without bunching it all up like that, I very carefully folded it over. And wasn't somebody going to come here and clean up my table, by the way, because it's still a mess. Anyway, it's folded over, and I did pin it. Okay, and then I flipped it around, and just make sure everything is nice and smooth. And then I did this side. I know this is tedious, I'm sorry. You know, I don't like you to be confused. Oh, I have you, I have you zoomed out. Because you really don't need to see me doing any close-up stitching. And I did invisible base this, so you can stop and invisible base these two sides now if you want, or you can just keep pinning. And then invisible baste the whole thing all the way around. Okay, you get the picture. I'm gonna stop there and show you this one I pinned. So now it's ready for an invisible baste. And once it's invisible basted, now it's gonna look like this. And it feels wonderful. Okay, so let's just go over that again. We're gonna do this four times for the sides, one for each side and one for the bottom. This is the bottom. I don't know if you noticed that the uh, eco print is slightly different. It's different cloth. I didn't have enough of this to do everything, so I had to interject this. This is gonna be my bottom, just a plain folded over with the cardboard and this is going to be the lining of the bottom. And let's stop there. I'm gonna prepare my pieces and then I'll come back and show you how I'm going to put them together. The next thing I want you to do is lay out your bag. There's four sides and a bottom and then and the wrong side is up. And then I want you to take two pieces, the side-by-side -side pieces, and just kind of go like that and make sure that you like what's happening here when you sew them together because you might not want two darks or two lights together, which in my case, that's what I don't want. So now I'm going to, and just be real careful when you pick them up. So just do that and then lay them back down and now do these two. And you might be checking, you know, what dots are there, blah, 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 what squares, all that stuff. Just make sure you like it. And then just lay it back down and don't move it. And this is the bottom. Now I'm going to start stitching these pieces together and I'm using, I'm using black embroidery floss, two strands, and I'm going to whip them just like I did in part two when I showed you how to sew two squares together. So I'm gonna start with these two, the bottom and this, and I'm gonna hold them right sides together, just like I did in part two. And I did put a pin in one end because when you're working with a long piece, 
it could shift on you. And this is six inches, so put a pin in the end. If you want, you can put a pin in the middle, but I'm just going to put a pin on the end and I'm going to start and keep checking yourself. So I'm not going to uh, show you how to sew these together because I did that already in part two. So I'm going to whip stitch this and then I'll come back and show you that. I time stamped the dot series. Part two is where you can find how to stitch the squares together. So after you sew these two pieces together, that's the bottom and this is the side. Don't forget when you lay it back down to do the next piece to lay it back down with the wrong side up so that you pick this up correctly. So now I'll pick up these two pieces, put a pin in the end, and then do the same thing, stitch across. These three are now stitched together. I still have the wrong side up. So now I'm going to stitch the two sides. I'm going to do this one, and then I'm going to do this one. Just keep remembering to lay it back down the way you had it so that you don't stitch them together. Right, so I just finished sewing this piece on and you can see I still have some string left. So I'm going to sew these two pieces together and then I'll come back and do this one. So I'm going to just pin the end. And you can see they still fit together really nicely. And I am going to pin the middle. Because sometimes what happens is it does like that. It shifts up and down. And I want these to meet exactly. where the seams come together. So just put another pin there. And I'm just gonna stitch along this edge. I finished sewing the last side and then stitched all the sides as you will see in the next segment. All right, so my bag uh, is sewn together. The bottom and the sides are all sewn. Before I sew up my lining, I want to put a pocket in and I'm going to, I think I'm just going to put one pocket. So I cut out a piece of, or I ripped it, a piece of eco print and it's nine inches by four and a half inches wide. And I did that so I could just fold it in half and I'm going to fold this over. I just like the way that looks and I wanted a little bit of an extra thickness up here just because I'm kind of rough on pockets. And I put the fold at the bottom. So this is the bottom. And you could also do it like this and have, just fold the fabric in half and have the fold up here and just do a running stitch around here. You could do that too, but I just like the way this look, it just gave it a little added dimension and texture. So when I stitch this down, and I'm going to put a few extra tack stitches up here because you know pockets get a lot of wear and tear. And you can put one pocket, no pockets, or many pockets. All right, that's the pockets. Then there's um, these little things. So these are the tabs or loops, whatever you want to call it. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to fold that in half. These are the loops that go up at the top of the bag. Okay, so that's the top of the bag. So this is one that I stitched. So I took two pieces and this is a three by three square. Same size as the finished square. And I stitched from top to bottom, top to bottom on both sides. I'll show you. Stitched it and then turned it Okay, so the right side is out. 
You can finger press it. You can iron it, whatever. You know me, I'm going to iron it. And then, or maybe not. And then I'm going to do a running stitch on both sides. Just because I think it'll look nicer and it'll keep everything in place. I'm going to fold this in half. And it will go there. And just to show you, there's the lining. Let's just pretend it's the whole inside lining. So this is going to go in between the lining and like that. It's going to be like a little sandwich. So you put about, I guess, a half an inch in there. So I have a good, healthy, I would say there's a good inch there. I thought I heard one of the littles. They were here earlier making uh, jelly prints. Um, all right, so you're going to need for these, you're going to need eight of these pieces, okay? Because you need to put two on each side. And you have four sides, so you need eight, eight pieces sew them together, turn them inside out, do a running stitch on here. My bag is sewn together and I'm showing you, you know, the top down of it. I love it. I have not taken out the basting yet. I'm going to do that now, but I wanted to show it to you before I did the next Part. So I'll set that aside and show you that my lining is also all sewn together the same way I did the bag. And I already showed you the pieces. So there's my bottom. My batting is in my lining. I'm calling this batting. It's flannel. And I did the whip stitch like I did um, in dots part two and that's all time stamped as I mentioned a couple times so you can just zip over to that video and go right to the timestamp you can scroll down the timestamp information is in the bottom of the description box so you can go right down there and see what time I show you how to do the stitching of the squares together and then you can go right over there to the video really quick and there's my pocket I think it's so cute. Now it's time to put this into this. But before I do, I'm going to take my basting stitches out. And then I'll come back and I'll do that on camera. Here's the bag. I got all the basting stitches out. And if I was to do this whole project again, so I have learned things and I've never done this before, so I'm kind of learning on the fly and you're going to learn from me. And I'm sure when you do it, you're going to learn more. But <laughs> that was a long run on sentence. Um, I would do the invisible based on these or I would use the squares because I have squares that were regular basted and squares that were invisible basted. I would have used the invisible basted squares just because, just because. All right, now here's my lining. I'm going to, let's try to put this in here while we're on camera here. All right, so what I'm going to do is just, I just kind of pushed it in there, and I'm just going to pin it. So I'm pinning it at the seam. So I'm pinning the seam of the lining to the seam of my dot. Now, you might notice that I have this little seam there. I am not at at all. I am not at all concerned about that. And I will tell you why in a minute. No, I'll tell you why now because sometimes I forget to come back and tell you. So these two pieces are going to fit together nicely. Now when I go to stitch these two pieces together, 
I'm just going to push this down a little bit and I'm going to do the whip stitch over this. So any little seam that's there is going to get covered. See that you're not even going to see that little piece sticking out there. I know some people put um, like a binding over there. I'm not doing that. So, and then of course my little things I have to do a running stitch on there. They're going to go in there. I'm uh, digressing. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to pin each corner. And so we're going to see, is this going to fit together properly? It should because I use those cardboard templates for everything. So it should be perfect. And if it's a little off, whatever. I'm okay with that. I just don't want it to be like four inches off. All right. Oh my gosh, I have a feeling this is going to be amazing. And yes, it appears to be that it fit in there. Look at that. Come on. Seriously. I did the running stitch around the very top edge of the bag to connect the lining to the bag and inserted the tabs in the center seam of each side as I went along. So I am absolutely in love with this bag and I've never made one of these bags before. So I had that going against me and I have never created one of these bags with the dots, which are finished. The edges are finished. So it was um, a bit of an interesting um, procedure, but I have conquered it, I feel. I'm real happy with the way it turned out and I have learned things as I went along. I'd like to interrupt this broadcast with an announcement. <laughs> yes. So one thing that I did um, want to mention to you, and I'm not going to call it a problem because I don't think it was. It was just uh, that I had considered that I would be quilting the bag because Catherine quilted hers. And there wasn't any real point at which I felt like now it's time to quilt it because my batting was in the back. It's in the lining. And so I felt to quilt, to quilt the front of it, it would need, you know, batting. Anyway, make a long story longer. I don't really think the bag needs quilting, to be honest, because it's got so much going on and it's got the lovely stitches in between the squares. So I don't really think it needs quilting, but if you did want to quilt it, I was talking to uh, my friend about it and she is a prolific sewer. And she said, you could lay the batting right up against, and I'm just going to use this as an example, pretend this is the front of the bag. She said, you could just lay the batting right up against the front of it. And you know, it would look like that, right? It would be right up against the front. And I was worried that the batting would like stick out when I sewed the lining to the front. But she said, just, just put it right there. Maybe, you, you know, you could even drop it down like a hair. And she said, it'll be fine. So I think that's a good option. So what I would do to take it one step further is I would cut the batting out to be the size of one of the panels and I would baste it. I would not invisible baste. I would give it a good baste so that after it was quilted, I could take the basting stitches out. And I think, I think you'd be good to go. So I just wanted to add that information for you because in case you were thinking to yourself, you wanted to quilt your bag and you know, maybe going forward, maybe you'll make squares that are finished like this. Maybe you'll love the technique so much that you'll do all your sewing like this in the future and maybe they won't have dots on them. So, you know, who knows? But I do like to share with you when I 
um, have wins and when I have loses. <laughs> so I don't consider this a lose, um, but you know, I don't have to keep going. So you get the idea. I really love the bag just as it is, but I am going to make another one and I am going to quilt it just because, just because. So let's continue with our video and I hope you're enjoying it so far. Next thing I'm going to do is put string in and I was telling you I'm gonna use cloth twine. So let me just set my bag aside for a second. So this cloth twine, I made this cloth twine, I don't know, 15 years ago. <laughs> I don't know, it was a really long time. So it was probably when I was first making cloth twine. And so it's really like very organic looking, let's call it that. And so it's like bumpy in spots and um, I do, I love it. Uh, it's loose, some of it is loose in spots, loosely twined. I'm going to use it because it's been shouting at me for a very long time. Why haven't you used me? And it's, look, it's the perfect colors. So I'm gonna cut some of this. I cut my twine 36 inches. It, I think that's too long. The bag is 24 inch circumference. Uh, I gave myself 12 inches just because I don't like to be short. So now I started here in this corner and I went all the way around and came out. You need two strings, but this one I'm going to start on the opposite end. And I have a safety pin on there and I'm also using a chopstick. I took the knot out just because I thought it would be easier to get the twine through without the knot. And I didn't cut this string yet. It's still attached to that big, sorry about my arm, um, that big ball of twine I just showed you. And I am so excited to have this bag done. Oh my gosh. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to quilt it. I'm going to put running stitches along the box and I'm going to quilt the bottom, but that's just, you don't need to see that. I'll show you a picture of that later. Uh, this is way, I'm doing this video way ahead of airtime. So I can actually just add a photo at the end. And you just wanna go through one more loop here. And come out where you started. Okay, so that's where I started. And you can see I have way too much string. So I'm just going to shorten that up. I just don't like to cut myself short with stuff like this because then if I don't have the right length, I'm going to get disappointed. So that looks, that looks good that I would have to do it again. So I'm just going to cut it off here and it's about, it's about 36 to 40 inches, which is quite a lot more than you need. And you'll see in a second, as soon as I uh, close this, then the strings become really long, but I might do something funky with the, with the strings. Take this one out. I need a manicure or something, don't I? So here we go. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Now see, I have all this left over, but I like it. I like it like that. So now, so that's a good 36 to 40 inches. So now I can actually just go like this, give it a little tie and a little bow. And there's plenty. Yeah, that's perfect. That's perfect for me. I'll even it out in a little bit. <gasps> I love it. Seriously, come on. Who doesn't love it? Shout it, shout it out if you love it. Leave me a comment if you love it. Let me know if you're going to make one. So this was super good fun. And we'll just stop there.